The sun's beautiful death. Five billion years from now, the sun is set to die, but new research says it won't just go out in a blaze of glory. When the sun comes to the end of its life cycle, it'll become a red giant and expand so much it may consume some planets like Mercury and Venus. After this, it is believed to become a white dwarf and eventually die. New research published in Nature Astronomy suggests the sun will become a planetary nebula. These are formed by a collapsed star's core lighting up surrounding gas and dust it ejects during the final stages of stellar death. This can last for around 10,000 years. Previous research posited that the sun's dying core wouldn't warm up quick enough to do this, but the new study demonstrates it could actually heat at triple the original belief speed. That means it has the potential to form a faint planetary nebula. A researcher on the study told The Guardian the nebula would be viewable from the Andromeda galaxy 2 million light years away. As for humanity, well, unless we find somewhere else to live in the next couple billion years, we're dust. Here's more on the sun. The sun will get dimmer by 2050. Who turned the lights out? Scientists are predicting the sun will be dimmer by 2050 in a phenomenon referred to as a grand minimum. The phenomenon comes at irregular intervals and is believed to be triggered by random fluctuations in the sun's magnetic field. During a grand minimum, sunspots form less frequently, the sun's magnetism is reduced, and less ultraviolet radiation makes it to Earth. A dimmer sun will affect Earth by first thinning the stratospheric ozone layer, which will then impact wind and weather patterns. So, does this mean global warming is solved? No, we're still screwed, but hey, that's what beautiful clean coal is for. Solar Flare The glowing yellow orb of life floating millions of miles away at the center of our solar system flared up in a massive, massive way this week. A massive storm over the sun on Wednesday discharged the strongest solar flare in 10 years. The National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration says the X9.3 flare caused high-frequency radio blackouts and navigational issues over the sunlit part of Earth. According to NASA, solar flares take place when magnetic energy built up within the sun's atmosphere is suddenly released. They impact everything on the electromagnetic spectrum, from radio waves to X-rays. The energy released is equivalent to millions of 100 megaton nuclear bombs exploding at the same time. The last solar flare of similar strength occurred in 2006, and the strongest on record took place in 2001. We're going to the sun. NASA is planning an ambitious new mission to touch the sun that will supposedly revolutionize our understanding of the yellow dwarf star. Solar Probe Plus is set to launch in summer 2018 and will orbit within 4 million miles of the sun's surface, closer than any spacecraft has approached before. The probe will be equipped with a carbon composite heat shield to help it withstand temperatures of more than 2,000 degrees Fahrenheit. It will collect data from the corona, the sun's outer atmosphere, to help solve the mystery of why it's millions of degrees hotter than the surface. Scientists aim to study solar activity in detail, particularly how solar winds are accelerated. This could improve forecasts of space weather events, which can shake the Earth's magnetic field and impact satellite communications, astronaut safety, power grids, and radiation on flights. NASA is in the process of building the Solar Probe Plus and has already installed key elements, including the cooling system. How geoengineering could cool the planet. Did you know we could cool the planet down with technology? Solar geoengineering specialists reckon technology could cool the planet's temperature by using it to add sulfur to the atmosphere. And that's central to the following ideas. Volcanic eruptions can cool the Earth. This is because they emit sulfur dioxide, a UV-repellent gas, into the stratosphere. Earther reports that millions of high-altitude balloons carrying sulfur may also be an option. But do that and you'll likely get plastic falling from the sky, plus it'll also be very, very costly. Another option, Earther reports, is to maybe use aircraft such as the Stratotanker to disperse the sulfur into the stratosphere, as the aircraft can already reach that altitude, which is around six miles from the Earth's surface. And while it may work, the costs could be high, and we're not just talking financially. Citing a leaked UN draft report on global warming, Reuters reports the organization's climate experts opined that solar geoengineering could be economically, socially, and institutionally infeasible. Moreover, Harvard's solar engineering head, Gert Wagner, told Earther that deployment of solar radiation management tech would be, quote, 
unambiguous proof of our miserable failure as a species to act as responsible planetary stewards. Here's how sunglasses and smartphones do not go hand in hand. Polarized sunglasses look cool, but they also protect your eyesight from harmful ultraviolet rays. Unfortunately, wearing them can render your smartphone unviewable. Here's how. Light waves vibrating across multiple planes are unpolarized, while those vibrating across just one are polarized. According to AllAboutVision.com, polarized light tends to reflect from flat surfaces and can create dangers such as glare and reduce visibility. Polarized lenses combat this with a filter that blocks this kind of light. Unfortunately, as Popular Science points out, they can also render your smartphone unviewable from certain angles, but they don't just make smartphone screens difficult to see. When worn, polarized glasses can affect the viewing of GPS devices and cell phones. AllAboutVision.com notes boaters and pilots wearing them have reported visual issues with LCD panels on important systems. And a misjudgment there can sometimes be fatal. But hey, there's an easy fix for the cell phone issue. Popular Science writes that by rotating a smartphone 90 degrees in either direction, a user wearing polarized glasses can line up the glass and phone filters to make the screen viewable again. Polarized glasses don't come cheap either. Manufacturers can bump up the price tag on such designer sunglasses by around $100 or more. Meet our sun's long-lost evil twin. Scientists have long believed that stars are born with at least one companion. Unfortunately, there hasn't been much evidence to support this theory until now. A new study has found that sun-like stars initially form as wide binaries and either come together or break apart over the next million years. Some systems, like the Alpha Centauri, even form as triplets. Our sun would have been separated by a distance of 500 or more astronomical units from its twin star before it was believed to have moved farther away. The twin has been dubbed Nemesis, after scientists hypothesized that it had knocked an asteroid out of orbit and sent it hurtling toward Earth. They say that asteroid eventually collided with our planet and killed off the dinosaurs. Still, Nemesis has never actually been found, and the idea that it may be responsible for catastrophic events on Earth has yet to be proved.